Hi guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In today's equipment autopsy, eight track, we have a Sound Design Super 8 model 4012B and it's an eight track player from God knows when, but I'm thinking 70s from the look of it. This is, this is cool. This is gonna be a neat one. All right. So the first thing I want to do is see if we can make it work. For that, we'll need an 8-track tape. So what 8-track tape do we want to destroy? Bob Dylan's greatest hits? No, nah, I, like, I like Bob. Bob's OK. We've got the Neil Diamond serenade. And we got Roy Clark in concert. Well, I think it's Roy Clark. And Bob Dylan can just hang out. So we're going to need to power it. So I've got my big trusty power supply. First thing I do is make sure we're getting the right voltage. What do you want? Twelve volts DC. Well, that's easy. Okay. Eh, 12 and change, that's close enough. Okay, so we got 12 volts DC, and this will fit. Of course, this is the charger for my FPV goggles. It fits, I'm happy. I love that I get to spend so much time working with electricity on a big stainless steel table. It was probably not the smartest choice but if you need an autopsy table, well, this is what you get. It was either this or Italian marble. And it'd just be weird. Okay, so those are safe. Does it do anything? Okay. Pinch rollers on that side, so you go this way. So it plays, it works. It's, aside from the fact that the program button is screwed up, everything on it is perfectly fine, which is more than enough reason to destroy it. So this is going to be one of those two-part things, because first we get to take this apart, and then we get to take Roy Clark apart. I think he's dead for a while now, so it'll be all right. Start by battery cover off. This wants eight C cell batteries, and it gives you part numbers for EverReady, Realtone, Sound Design, RCA, Zenith, and UM. So that's cool. And those are all battery part numbers, so that's kind of cool. Let's tear into it. What do you want? Probably just regular old Phillips. You're not going to find any tri wings in this. That won't fit. Fits there. Yeah, I can't get in those holes. Okay, so I need a long, skinny Phillips head. You, maybe? Yeah, that'll work. They're way in there. This is, this is like the old Macintosh computers where you need a special screwdriver. Here's one for you. Comment in if you know the name of the special screwdriver that you had to buy to work on the old Macintosh computers. 
Also, what was the head? That feels right. Yeah, I think I got that. Oh, yeah. Glorious inner goodness. Time for the dish. Okay, this is neat. Speaker's actually like mounted in there with mounts. Taking that out. And my goal at first is going to be to disassemble this in such a way where it's still functional, like it works, but there's as few parts as possible because I want to show you what it looks like when it actually works. And I'll just turn the sound all the way down so that YouTube doesn't have a fit. No glue around the edge, that's a surprise. But let's start by getting rid of the housing. Okay, there's our volume knob, which we'll just turn down to, well, yeah. So we got that, we got that. Power plug just pops right out. Okay, we don't need that. Let's get out of the other half. What don't we need here? It's held together with twist ties instead of zip ties or waxed string like you'd expect to see in something this old. These are just garbage bag twist ties. How long has it been since you've seen a garbage bag that actually used a twist tie? The only place I see these these days is on bread, and most bread just comes with a plastic thing with, I'm sure it has a name, but I don't know what it is, a little bread clip. Okay, so we don't need Don't need brown. We'll need orange. Because that connects to the blue. Yeah, I'm going to end up tethered to that, and there's nothing I can do about it. But I can still get all the mechanism out. Remarkably simple. Like there is nothing in here that doesn't absolutely need to be here. Which makes it helpful in taking it apart. The trick is I gotta make sure there aren't a lot of screws, but the ones that are in there are very necessary. So I gotta take out just the mounting screws. So here's our dingus. Can I get that out? I think I can get that out. I think I can get that out just by yanking on it. Bend it, pull it. Okay, so now we have the whole mechanism exposed. So we can plug this back in. Stay over there so you don't fall off the table. Okay. This should still work. Oh, yeah. You gotta. So it's all driven off one motor. So I can take that off and set this up here. I want it to not rattle on the table. Mm -hmm. 
Now I can't go backwards. See, I can do that and YouTube won't yell at me. It's entirely analog and I've probably just like set some chiptune dude off to a whole new level of stuff. You can do this with an 8-track player. You can't turn it backwards though and we'll talk about why in a bit but you can't rewind on an 8-track tape. They only go in one direction. Now I wonder if it'll change tracks now that I got the thing apart. Um, let's find out how... Well that sounds different. I'm gonna put that face down so it doesn't... And I can put this on there. So that's what's going on. The problem is all you can see is the motor and the capstan wheel. So let's go through what we can see. I think it's time to really start cutting some bits off. It's kind of neat how much of this you can take apart and still be able to make it work. So, we don't need this. Get that right out of the picture. Now it doesn't work anymore. Okay, we're past the point of no return. So, what you've got is this is just a simple potentiometer on a number wheel for showing uh, what your volume is, what your volume setting is. We can get rid of that. So now we've got this mechanism here, which shows you what track you're on. Though it's technically what pair of tracks. Get rid of the power button, or the power cord. Don't need that. Take speaker off. It's just a speaker. This is, look at this, oh my god. Let's, uh, can I take you off? I can totally take you off. I'll bet that's all that holds it on there. What are you caught up on? There's only one screw. Oh! All right, okay, that was a new one. You had to slide it forward to pop it out. Okay, so this little board controls power to the motor and contacts from the switch and the head connects here. So this is a power supply and an amplifier circuit. And it's got that old electronic smell like, yeah. Smells like cancer. Check out the back. Old school circuit board. A little tiny piece of captain tape on there. So you've got, this is the uh, trace side of a circuit board. And we've seen these before where it's the, the hand laid style. This wasn't done on a computer. Some guy actually drew that and probably cut a mask out with a razor blade at one point. On this side, you can see it's covered in schmoo. You can see it reflecting in a light. The, the whole board is just covered in a layer of schmoo. I don't know what it is. I don't see... The caps are glued down, so I don't see any evidence of them leaking. But it's, it might be flux, but uh, it's pretty nasty. Check out the resistors. The resistors have white insulated wires on them. That's kind of cool. 
So we've got some electrolytic caps here. These are resistors, capacitors. These are probably simple transistors. Nothing high tech, nothing complicated. This is, this is one of those things that you could build this, no problem. This is off the shelf parts. These are all just little jelly bean parts. There's nothing here that you probably couldn't buy at Mauser. In fact, anybody who looks at that and takes a screenshot of it, and this, as I turn it around so you can get all the values, the only thing you wouldn't be able to get right offhand is the transistors. Oh, we got a couple of things back here too. But uh, there's the circuit. With just that, I'm sure there are people who are watching this that could easily build this. There's your identification there. There's your identification there. I think it'd be really cool, by the way, if somebody actually built this. I'm trying to get that out of the light enough so you can read it. There you go. Cool, so that's a circuit board. And that pretty much does everything now, this is our channel indicator because of, you'll see there's four channels and the way it works in an eight track player is you have eight tracks in stereo pairs. So you have four sets of tracks, four channels, and they're all side by side linear on the tape and this is which set you're picking. So think of it kind of like how a record had two sides. This has four sides, but it's all in one tape. So let's take into here. But you can do a lot with brute force and ignorance. You just lean on it, which is the one advantage of a Phillips head. Okay, so we got that off. I got one little one there, but I think that's the wrong. Yeah, it's the wrong size. Oh no, we'll be back to you. Let's go over here and just grab that. You're way tinier. Ah. Okay. Can I come out? No, I gotta pop that thing off. You'll do it. A little bushing there. So this switch, which is about as high tech as a pinball machine, this switch here, just a couple reads, is uh, it turns everything on. This is the switch that a tape has been inserted. And it rides just right here. And when the tape comes in, it pushes it up. So rock simple. So now we're into the really intricate high-tech parts of an 8-track player. There really aren't any intricate high-tech parts of an 8-track player. So now that we're inside it, we can see here's where the tape sits. Here's an extra spring just hanging out. Here's our capstan. Here's our playback head. Here's our tape guide. And this I'm not sure of. I think it might just be a tensioner or something. So yeah, this is probably what presses against the foam. There's a, a bit of foam in the tape, and the tape just goes in right like this. Let's see if I can show you that better. You can see that's how it works. That's all there is to it. It's just pressure holds it there. It locks in place with a uh, this wheel, and spring tension pulls this wheel into this notch in the side of the tape, and that's chunk. That's what holds it in there. That's it. This is a really really simple mechanism. As far as tape goes, this is about as simple as it gets. So here's our capstan roller. Now the purpose of the capstan 
is to establish playback speed. That's what a capstan does. Um, you'll see this in anything that uses tape, you're going to find a capstan roller. And the motor spins at a precise speed on a precise sized pulley. This has a precise size outer ring on the pulley here, and this spins at a very specific speed. And as long as all those things match up, it'll play at the same speed all day long. However, if you change the um, speed of the motor or something like that, it'll play at different speeds. So we've got the motor here, which is just a 12 volt DC motor. Well, that answers that question. I was curious, because I'd never really done one of these before, I was curious to see how it changed to what track is next. And if you look here really close, watch the head. Here's the head, and you can actually see the, the left and right read head in there. That's those little, right in there, that's the left and right read head, okay? And when you press the mechanism down, watch what it does. And I've removed its ability to go backwards. Okay, There's, it needs a spring pushing on it. Look at the location. See the two black stripes in the middle there? Right there and there. Let's say that's left and that's right. I don't know for sure, but we'll just say that. Left and right, okay? And this is the tape guide right here, this channel, this notch. So look at the relationship of that notch to the relationships of the head as I click through the channel select. It doesn't move a lot, but there's one. We're way up here. Two, three, four. You can see that it moves. You can see a lot between one and four, but there's one, two, three, four. So it's picking which tracks. The alignment is terrible. Terrible. This is not a precision device. This is also a mono device, so it's not even doing actual stereo. It's got, well, it's because it only has the one speaker on it. It's just a little boom box, so who cares? But if you look at the head here, you can see it's a stereo head. You can see a left and right head. But on the bottom, they're just wired in parallel. That's it, solder bridge. So, yeah. There is, and I think this is hilarious, adjustment right here. to adjust the head, to fine tune it. So let's take that right out. Don't need that. So there's our head. And I'm going to give you a really close look at this in a little bit. So we'll come back to this, because this is really cool. But there's your uh, labeling for the head. And all this is is two little tiny coils of wire. That's it. It's really simple. So we'll come back to our head. Over here, we've got a motor and the mechanism. The mechanism is really just a cam. So here's the cam mechanism, and that controls the height for the head. And then we've got the motor, which is just a generic yum cha gua long ding dong motor. Ah, 30 years of history and oxidation, cheap screws, and non-trivially applied amounts of blue Loctite. And that one screw is staying there forever. So there's the motor. Now the motor is rated 2400K slash M. And I'm wondering if that's similar, like probably the same thing, as the KV ratings that I'm used to in motors on quadcopters and stuff like that. Hmm. So that's all that's left. That's the whole thing. And that's a look inside an eight track tape player, a simple one, a portable one. So thank you for watching and hanging out. Oh, wait, I got more to do, but I got to get something special. I'll be right back. 
All right, so here, could, here you can see the top of the head and a lot of my fingerprints, so now you can steal my identity. And you can see that there are very clearly two playback heads there. That's the little silver rectangle at the middle of the black bar. That's the actual head itself for left and right tracks. Now, if you look around, you can see up at the top right of the head, the black gungy bits there. That's bits of tape and dirt ground into the head. And you can see all the lines across the surface of the head. That's the same thing. That's all just schmoo that's collected on here from dozens and dozens of tapes being played. And this builds up, and it's what makes heads dirty. So there's what a head looks like up close and personal. It's really easy on this one because they're very big and they're very far apart. When we get into exploring other things that use analog tape, I'll show you the heads as we get up into them, and you'll be able to understand this as a reference. Uh, this is designed to play eight track, quarter inch tape. So, but it only plays two tracks at a time, and it moves like, you know, tracks one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. So you don't have a lot of room to play with, but in the world of heads, this is huge. All right, so now let's take a look at the tape. Now this is rock simple, but it's elegant. It's really neat. Remember how I told you you can't rewind and fast forward, or well, you can't rewind with an eight track? I'm about to show you why. So we're gonna pop the little plastic tabs so we can wedge, oh, this is gonna be fun. So we can wedge our way in here. Get to use a little baby hammer. That did it. Yeah, okay. No user serviceable parts inside. <laughs> yeah, that's the sound I want. Okay. There we go. Now, there's inside an 8-track. Welcome to the 1970s. What do you not see? Now notice we have a guide, just a little plastic slide with some built-up schmoo on it. We've got the pinch roller. Remember, we got into the player and there was a capstan, but no pinch roller. Here is the pinch roller, and the pinch roller is carried in every single cartridge. So that's everything in the top. We don't need that. Now here, we've got the foam, which is really disgusting, schmooed out, gummy, old foam with some clear cellophane on top, and that's, that's probably growing things from the 70s. And what do we have left? One reel. Just one reel. There's no take-up reel. The supply reel is the take-up reel. So here's what makes it cool. I'll flip it over so we can lift it out. Now, if I turn this to its side, you can see there's like a little funnel here. See the little funnel shape? The tape, because you can't push a rope is always under tension, and it's always turning in this direction. Now I'll put my fingers here. Maybe I can do better. I'll put my fingers here like this. Now watch. As I turn the tape, it takes up on this side, and it pays out. It's pulling it out from the middle. So the tape always has to be going this way around. It's really clever how they did that. This is neat. No matter what you're doing, you're always going forward. You can't rewind an 8-track tape. And by doing that, they get rid of the whole supply and take-up reel and all that. It's just one continuous reel. The tape itself is a continuous loop. So this means, how do you know when to change tracks? How do you know when the loop is done? Well, it's going to take me a minute to show you that.
Hey, before the internet, this was our idea of entertainment. Boom. So there's the reel. And now, somewhere on this tape, I will find a little piece of metal. So we're going to break the tape so that I only have to do this once. And we're just going to go right through the tape. And it's pretty easy to spot. It's right there. I'll hold this down here so you can see it really well. But you can see on the tape is a little piece of metal foil. It's really thin foil. But it doesn't take a lot. And I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll crease it a little bit so it sticks out. But you can see there is the splice. The foil is the splice in the tape. So that's where the ends are. And that foil causes the mechanism to be like ah! inside. It, it freaks out. And it's like, oh, wow, there's a thing there. And it can be done. There's a million different ways they did it. Sometimes it was just a couple contacts that sensed the conductivity of the metal foil. Sometimes it was the head itself just freaking out, going, nah, having you know, a little electro seizure. But it senses this, and when this passes through the playback mechanism, it knows, kick it to the next track. And if it's already on four, it'll kick back to one. So that's how the tape works. But really, all of this is one continuous loop of tape. Or at least it was until I broke it in half. So, there you go. That is the excitement and joy of an 8-track tape. Also, totally useless knowledge, you could use this tape, this standard quarter-inch tape. This is really cheap, terrible tape. But you could use this tape in a regular quarter-track machine, like a, a two- or four-track quarter-inch machine that we've explored on this channel before. This tape would work just fine. It's just quarter-inch ferromagnetic tape. So, you guys have fun. I am the beautiful Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time.